so um, this is a video. Um, I sent you an email last time. I'm Anna and this is Mavi. We are working together on the project. And so here are the questions. First one, um, you obviously have a reason to, uh, for getting into uh, the business. So what would you say about dreams in general? Second question, how and why did you get into the business of interpreting? Interpreting, is that how you say it? Dreams? And third question, what are your thoughts on the Sigmund Freud theory? Do you think it, it's the most known theory to interpret dreams? Uh, next question, do you have a set of rules or instructions you follow to interpret um, people's dreams? Do you know about some of the most recent studies about interpreting dreams? If so, which ones? Um, second to last, what is one dream that you interpreted that left an impression on you, good or bad? And last question, what are your thoughts about why we dream and if dreaming has something to do with reality? Thank you, I hope you answer and thanks for helping us. Hi, Anna and Mavi. Thanks for making me a wee video with your dream questions. It's fantastic. So your first question is, what would you say about dreams in general? Well, that's a very general question. What I'd say about dreams in general is that they are a tremendous resource, a tremendous resource that we all have access to. Everyone dreams. We dream on average for two hours per night. So you spend a twelfth of your life dreaming. Our dreams are a very underused resource. People tend to dismiss dreams as being of no consequence. And most people who work with dreams do it in a kind of psychic, woo-woo, pointy hat, swirly cape, crystal ball sort of way, which in my experience and from my perspective is completely useless. That's far more about the dream interpreter than the dreamer. Uh, the way I work with dreams is in a very positive and healthy way. I work with imagery and language and always try to place myself in the point of view of the dreamer and so I can get an understanding of why they create the dreams. And that's something else I would say about dreams in general is that the traditional view is that dreams happen to us and we just lie there like some kind of passive psychic receiver tuned into the ether somehow. But the reverse is true. There's a guy called Mark Soames, who's a professor in South Africa, and he demonstrated, proved in the 1990s, that dreams don't happen to us. We actually happen to our dreams and create everything we experience in them, including all the people, places, events and objects. So that was quite a long answer to quite a general question. So your next question is, how did I get into this business? Um, I've always been fascinated by dreams ever since I was a small child. And my earliest memory is from maybe, I was maybe two and a half years old. And it's a dream. I, I dreamt that a, a big steam engine was traveling towards me and I was trying to get out of the way. And I woke up, I was a bit upset, and my father came through to my bedroom to see what all the commotion was about. And I kept asking what happened, where the train had gone, what was going on. And he said, it was just a dream, it's just a dream. And then being at that age, two and a half years old, I started saying, uh, but what's a dream? What's a dream? Why do we dream? My father wasn't a psychologist, he was a coal miner. And the next day was a Saturday, it was one of his days off. And uh, true to his word, uh, he showed me what a dream was. He took me down to the colliery where he worked. And there was a bridge over the railway there. And they still used old steam trains for shunting coal around. And we stood there for a few minutes on this old wooden bridge and then in the distance, we could see a plume of smoke heading towards us along the railway and we stood there for a couple of minutes more and the plume of smoke got closer and closer until it passed underneath us and we were enveloped in this huge cloud of steam and smoke and sparks. It was really exciting and thrilling. 
and then the cloud faded away and the steam train chuffed off into the distance and my father turned to me and said that's what a dream is. So ever since then I've just been fascinated by dreams, why we dream and now in the work I do in the business I work in, um, what we can actually do with dreams, how we can use them in a really valuable and successful way. Your third question, <laughs> yeah, two questions. What are your thoughts on the Freud theory and do you think it is the most known theory to interpret dreams? Uh, no, my, my thoughts on the Freud theory, the, the Freud originally published the interpretation of dreams in 1899, so quite a while ago, and things have moved on about how we work with dreams since then. Uh, Freud's theory is really all about the unconscious. See, so he, he brought the idea of the unconscious into the scientific mainstream. And his idea of the unconscious was it was all taboo and repressed stuff. And it was a way of the unconscious communicating with the conscious. But he viewed it as a bad thing. And then Freud's protege, Jung, Carl Jung, um, he took things a bit further and, and did it in a more mythical way. Freud's way of interpreting was, was largely based on 19th century industrial chemistry in Germany. And if you look at all his terms of things like condensation, distillation, residue, all these chemical terms. And what Jung used were far more esoteric terms drawn from alchemy, astrology, I Ching and Tarot which were far more mythical and about human stories and human individuation. So Jung's probably a bit more positive and healthy, but since then there have been lots of people researching dreams, not just in the idea of the process of dreaming, but all the things around dreams, around uh, culture, cultural anthropology, art, society, all these different things. So yeah, it, it's the most known theory, I guess, but people often ask me when, you know, when I'm introduced as a dream expert, then uh, they say, oh, are you a Freudian or a Jungian? But it's like saying, do you support United or City or Celtic or Rangers? They're just, Freud and Jung are kind of um, deified, but they were just two guys who were interested in dreaming, as I am. Do you have a set of rules and instructions you follow to interpret people's dreams. Um, yeah, I guess I do. I use a thing called the dream connection process. So always working with the image, just always work with the image. So say someone creates a dream that involves a lion. The lion is a classic symbol of pride and confidence. So if they have a dream where they're being chased by a lion, and there's something happening in their waking life where they have the opportunity to demonstrate their power and confidence and have that recognised by other people. And there's something that's preventing them from doing that in waking life. So working with the dream, uh, the, the questions I would ask about the image are, are things that are to do with the image itself and not, nothing beyond that. So the idea of working with the image, the way you work with the dream is to ask questions rather than just giving a, a definition. So the dream connection process that I use, you name what the image means. So you might say to your client or the dreamer, is there an area in your waking life where you feel you could be more confident or some area of your life where you're really proud of what you do? And then you ask a reflecting question, which is kind of the opposite. So you might say, is there an area where you feel less confident than you think you should be? Or where do you feel a bit embarrassed about what you do? And then you use an expanding question, uh, which just really opens up, op opens up some options. So things like, um, how, uh, what other areas might you use your talents confidently in? Or what other parts of your life, what other things of your, in your life are you really proud about? And then all those questions will lead to an action statement. And I guess the way, that's the way I work with dreams. I think a dream is just a dream until you put it into action. So you take the image, you form some questions around it, and the answers to those questions will give you an action statement so you can use the image in waking life and do something valuable. 
and useful with it. And your next question is, do you know about some of the most recent studies about interpreting dreams? If so, which ones? Yeah, well, there haven't been too many studies about interpreting dreams. I wrote a book called The Top 100 Dreams a few years ago, which was just about the, as the name <laughs> the title might suggest, the 100 most common dreams from around the world. Um, most studies into dreaming are to do with the, the neurophysiology of dreaming and just trying to measure brain waves uh, and look at neural activity, which is... It's kind of useful. I mean, it's very interesting to know what the brain's doing, but I'm far more interested in seeing what's happening, what's happening from the inside moving out rather than looking from the outside in. I'm far more interested in seeing how dream imagery manifests in the outer world. So most dream studies are done about trying to correlate imagery with brain activity. Uh, it's not done very successfully. It's very contextual. Uh, there's an associate of mine, Professor Yuki Kamatani, in Kyoto, who's built a, a dream, a dream recording machine, which is not really, it's just a big fMRI, and he can correlate brain activity with imagery, but it's kind of really fuzzy. It's hard to tell if you're looking at a parrot or a giraffe or Marlon Monroe. So, um, and the key thing about all these studies to do with dreams, they try to be done in a very objective and analytical way. But the key thing with a dream, for the dreamer, is the meaning. And that's why working with the image is so important. Uh, there's lots of studies being done on lucid dreaming, which is the ability to make choices in your dreams uh, by guys like Michael Schredel in Germany. So most dream research is more about the physiology of dreaming rather than actually using images in a really positive and healthy way, which is what I try to do with my clients. Uh, what is one dream that you interpreted that left an impression with you, good or bad? Now, one of my catchphrases is there's no such thing as a bad dream. A dream just is a dream, and you perceive it as being good or bad, scary or amazing, and the, just about you know every dream I've well, I've worked with over two hundred thousand dreams now in my career, and every dream I find amazing. Uh, one that does stick out was one that wasn't particularly amazing, where a, a client of mine, a lady client of mine, uh, had this recurring dream that she was just standing at a bus stop. That's all she was doing, and just nothing nothing happened. Uh, the bus never came. Well, it did come eventually after we'd worked through the dream with her. Uh, but in that idea of being dreams being incredible, amazing experiences, it seemed quite a dull and tedious dream. So, uh, yeah, that was quite intriguing. Uh, yes, what are your thoughts about why we dream and if dreaming has something to do with reality? The reason why we dream is to make sense of all the unconscious experiences we absorb. So, so guys like Benjamin Levy in San Francisco and Stanislas Dehan in Paris have shown that 98%, well in excess of 98% of what we experience in waking reality occurs unconsciously. So we're only consciously aware of 2% of our feelings, our thoughts, emotions, uh, what Freud called ideation. So one of the ways we process that 98% that we absorb unconsciously is through working through it in our dreams. So the, the main function of dreaming really is, to, is a sense-making process, to make sense of all the things we experience unconsciously, which really happen at the emotional level. So one of the main ways we resolve emotional tension is through dreaming. And when we dream, it's, it's our fundamental way of imagining who we are, what we need, and what we believe. So the, the dream is how you imagine yourself. It's the ultimate self-portrait, the ultimate selfie. And they do have a connection to reality. Not in the sense that you can work with a dream literally, but when you experience something, particularly something emotionally intense in your waking life that you're trying to make sense of, 
then you will create a dream around that. So if you're having a very emotional time, the, the classic symbol for emotions and feelings is water. Uh, so we have idioms like, I'm a low ebb, I'm in floods of tears, I'm pouring my heart out. And so if you have a dream of water, then you have the opportunity to navigate some emotional tension in your waking life. So working with the dream image can really, really help you in waking life to understand things that might seem to be dilemmas when you're trying to make a decision or things that seem paradoxical or just don't seem to make sense in some way. So working with your dreams is a very, very useful thing, particularly when you are doing more with them, like in lucid dreaming, where you have that power and the choice um, to choose particular directions or make decisions in your dreams because that naturally translates into your waking life and it gives you the realisation that you always have more power and you always have more choice than you think you do. So thanks very much for these great questions, Anna and Mavi, and I hope that's helped your project. Thank you. Thank you.